when men are too quick in the bedroom, the causes and the solutions. Mm-hmm. Whew, karibu sana. I'm a bit anxious because <laughs> it's only you and I and the uh, listener. And your cats. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not a man, <laughs> but I have so many questions. Okay. And I hope the gentleman will call me uh, 0719012600. I've told you from 9.08 p.m. However, you can be sending me WhatsApps on 011102. Double eight one six two zero double one zero two double eight one six two. You can be send me your questions there before I open my calls at nine oh eight. So, Daktari, how was your ride here? Hi, it was great. Yeah. Um, I'm anticipating an interesting <laughs> session. Yes. Yep. We were having a conversation on. <laughs> Can you really be able to uncover somebody's personality? Is that possible? Their true personality? It is possible, but through some detailed psychological assessment. Not layman's like Kawaida? No. Maybe if we talk for long, yeah. I can guess. Okay. So by the time I leave, I'll know a bit of your personality. Mm. Uh-huh. And personality and a person being good or bad, can they both exist, coexist? Does personality determine your, whether you're good or bad? No, it just determines how you see the world and how you react to the world. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, then it's me to choose whether I want to accept it or not. Yep. But everyone <laughs> is good. Really? I think so. Even the one who's even the ones who stole COVID money. <laughs> <laughs> that is the bad side, but they are good. <laughs> they just they just have a small bad side. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Yeah. Anyway, Karibu Sana, Professor. Thank, thank you so you. much for making time. Yeah. So let's just get right into it. Um, we are discussing about when men are too quick in the bedroom. What are the causes and solutions? So I'll begin by saying some men say sorry love i was so excited i hadn't seen you for a while what is the difference between that and premature ejaculation pe pe yes what is the difference between excitement um, to the arrival and mm. premature ejaculation i think it's important to say we are talking about sex here yeah? yes we are because people might wonder yes we are talking about c- sex yeah yes miriam <laughs> <laughs> yes we are talking about sex you are talking about your age earlier <laughs> on and there was this song about uh, let's talk about sex baby uh-huh. <laughs> you know we are adults yeah and it is important for us to speak about sex from an informative mm-hmm. point of view Yeah. So that, you know, people have the knowledge and understanding. It is very important because yes. a lot of people are suffering quietly. Yeah. They can't talk about it. They don't know what to do. And some are going into depression. Yeah. Some are having anxiety because they have a problem, but they can't talk about it. So it's important to talk about sex. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's part of being healthy. I, I love talking about sex, by the way, on ah. all my social medias. But anyway, that's not the conversation. <laughs> so, what, so yeah, what's the difference between I was excited because mm. I hadn't seen you for a long, long time yeah. and premature ejaculation, PE? Yeah, so for every sex dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, it's not a one-off thing. Mm. It's a consistent um problem over time uh, that causes worry to you or to your partner so if someone has been uh, finishing too fast for a long time and it worries them then that's a problem but if it is just one off mm. uh, this year it happened once and uh, that's it then it's not a problem because days are different mm. and um Each day brings a different experience. So yeah. 
if it's just one off, it's not a problem. But I think it's also important to define what we mean by quick. That was what I was going to ask. So what is quick? Quick. So uh, it really varies. Okay. One, uh, there are people who finish before they start. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. Uh, <laughs> 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 Laughing is allowed. <laughs> you finish before you begin. Oh yeah. God, I'm so sorry for you. <laughs> That's why Prof is here. Thank yes. God. Yes. So, so, uh, so what does that mean, though? We call it severe premature ejaculation. <sighs> so, um, someone before they have penetrative sex. Yes. They have already had an ejaculation oh, wow. and they have finished. And most of these people come to me because they can't even have a relationship. Mm. I have uh, men in their 40s oh my gosh. who don't have a wife mm. because they tried and it was so embarrassing. They tried again, it was more embarrassing mm. and they just gave up. And most of them, uh, their families will be accusing them of being irresponsible and not wanting to settle down and uh, uh, all manner of accusations. Yeah. But they can't talk about it. So that is the severe form. Uh, it happens either before or just when trying to have penetrative sex. So you're finish. not fully inside and then you arrive? You may be outside. Oh my God. Or trying to go inside mm. and you end it there. And you know, unfortunately for a man, and like ladies, yes. when you have had your uh, orgasm, the erection goes. So yes. it means sex cannot continue. Yeah. It ends there. For the man. For the man. Yeah. So that is the severe form. But then there are also other um, levels. There is the moderate form, not so severe. Mm -hmm. um, they penetrate within a minute, they are done. So those ones... Most of them will be married and um, the wife will be complaining, but they have children. Mm. Uh, but the wife is complaining that, you know, there is a problem here. I'm sorry to interrupt you. You've yeah. said, but they have children. Why did you feel to include that? Because uh, occasionally people come to me with a complaint of inability to conceive. Yes. And when I ask, so are you guys having sex? Then they look at each other. Mm. And then you realize they've been trying to have sex, but it never happens. There are many couples have met people who have lived for 10 years and they never had sex. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in the moderate form, yeah. um, most of them have a relationship. They may be married, but they know there is a problem mm. uh, because ejaculation happens within one to two minutes. Occasionally it can go towards three minutes. Um, the mild form is where, yes, it's more than a minute, maybe <coughs> around two, three minutes. Yes. And most of them may not even complain, but it worries them occasionally mm, mm, mm. Uh, because they are between normal and abnormal. Yeah. Normal, um, what we say, not really normal, but most, most people who consider themselves normal ejaculate within five to seven minutes. Hey, Ababa Meskia, the doctor has said it. Doctor, please repeat. <laughs> normal is what? So most men yes. who consider themselves normal, <laughs> I say <it> consider <laughs> because even some of them want to go longer. Oh, wow. And some of them, their sex mates want them to stop before yeah. they, yeah. So, but life no, life no balance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh -huh. five to seven minutes. So five to seven is considered personally normal. Yeah. But for some abnormal as well. Yeah. People are so different. Oh my gosh. You've had Professor Joachim Osur. Mm -hmm. Five to seven minutes is considered 
normal. It depends on who you are. Why men are too quick in the bedroom, the causes and solutions. Mm. We are the adults in the room. Spice. Uh. So I want to know now, how does premature ej ejaculation affect the man mentally? You know, um, a man's mind is very connected to his sexuality. When a man cannot perform sexually, they lose their ego. Okay. They lose their, um, uh, you know, they feel like useless, if I use that word. Uh, it is like the world is ending on you. Mm. And so a lot of men who can't perform sexually cannot even progress in their professions because they're spending a lot of time thinking about wow. their failure. So they know deep down they are not performing. They know deep down they are not yeah. performing. Yeah. And women don't make it any better because women will tell you, um, Nini mbaya na wewe? Do women honestly, are they that honest? When they are frustrated. I'm trying to imagine me be, I don't know if I can be that honest. I don't want to hurt his feelings. Well, maybe you've not been frustrated before. Oh, you're right, Dr. Osur. You're right. Uh -huh. Yeah. So when you are, you will ask the question, yeah. Nini mbaya na wewe? Can't yeah. you be like any other man? Wow. And that really kills the man's ego. Wow. Mm. Wow. So now does um somebody told me to ask this question. Before I ask the question, I wanted to ask Ness. They mm. asked me to ask you, I'm a person who self pleasures. Mm -hmm. Can this be a contribution for PE? Okay. And again, um so let, let's you know, I, I'm not sure everyone knows what you're talking about. Okay. Um, so self-pleasuring, you mean they masturbate? Yes. Okay. So um, when someone masturbates frequently, sometimes they get a problem. When you say someone, mm. we are we saying it's just the male? We are talking about Even the women male. masturbate. Yes, women do. However, yeah. but you know, there's the difference for a woman and a man. Ama is the consequences the same for both? So for a man, it's a bit different. Okay. When a man masturbates frequently, they kind of start to have a problem having partner sex. Ooh. Sometimes they start losing erections. In sometimes, between. Yeah. And sometimes they ejaculate prematurely. Mm. And so because the two are not the same, but it's one body. So the body gets confused. Okay. So, and I know uh, these are really very value-laden issues. Yeah. Um, people can do what they want, but I, what I've seen is if someone has been masturbating yeah. again and again and again, and then they want to start having partner sex, they have a problem. They start having some problems. Uh -huh. So we have to help them to convert from masturbation to partner sex. How often, and okay, there's a question I wanted to begin with, but now that we are here, um, how often do you get such instances of, on the statistics of self-pleasure, just self-pleasure, mm. how often do you get such that i mean how often do people come to you or you the statistics are for self-pleasure as a contributor to pe so uh it is not so common as a cause okay L let me say this uh masturbation is part of sexual growth yes almost everyone masturbates at one time or another yeah as part of self-discovery yeah and then they outgrow it. Yes. But then there are those who get stuck there. And they want to do it again and again and again. Even as they reach an age where they want to <coughs> engage in partner sex. Mm -hmm. Now it is those ones. And they are not, I won't say, I don't have the statistics. But I do meet them. They are those ones. They are the ones who then conversion becomes a problem. 
Because mm. they are kind of stuck there. So it's like they are addicted? Uh, they are used to it. Maybe the term addiction could be <laughs> meaning too something heavy. else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's too heavy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are used to it. Yeah, they are used to it. And so when they try now doing partner sex, they face a challenge. Now it is not like an, a problem which cannot be solved. Okay. Because they come and we work through it. And then they are able to do more partner sex and kind of slow down on masturbation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's possible for them to overcome it. Very true. Okay. It is possible, yeah. So then let's talk about <coughs> self-enhancement pills. Yep. <laughs> self-enhancement. How do they contribute to PE? You are thinking of the blue pill? All the pills. <laughs> <laughs> Blue, green, yellow. <laughs> yeah, there are many All colors. Them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, so they don't really contribute to PE as such. But uh, what I would say is it is important to use them for the right reasons. And those right reasons, we determine when we examine people in the hospital and tell them, you know the blue pill is needed here. Yeah. Uh, when you use them for the wrong reason, sometimes you end up with problems. Mm. Actually, not PE as such. Um, you may have had people who have an erection which cannot stop. Mm -hmm. And things like that. Mm. Or someone who overdoses uh, those medicines and then they end up with... Heart attack. Heart problems. If they already have a heart, heart problem and they take too many of those tablets they yeah. end up with. So it's important to to use them on prescription. Yeah. And for the right reason in that matter. Yeah. So let's now break it down to Okay, before I we introduce the causes of premature ejaculation, mm -hmm. I want to rule out the concept or you, okay, not rule out, but I want to introduce the concept of age and I want you to just make it clear. Mm. Does age play, hey, forgive me, I'm from Yeri. Mm. Does age play a role <laughs> 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 in PE? Yeah. Because um, we have men who are in their eight, in, you know, early 20s. Mm. You know? Yeah. So, um, let me say this. PE is the second commonest male sexual problem. The first is ED, erectile dysfunction. Uh, but PE is commonest in younger people. Okay. Than in older people, especially what we call primary PE. The one that uh, you're born with, you're born and you find yourself having it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like inbuilt. You, you, the first time you tried, it's PE. Uh, mm -hmm. We call it primary. That is common among young people. Okay. Uh, but there is a secondary PE which is brought about by other causes, which can be medical, psychological, or social in nature. Yeah. And they tend to happen more among the older men mm. uh, in their 40s and 50s and so on. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. Higher. So now let's get into um, what are the factors that contribute to PE? What are specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it one by one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we normally group them into three. Yes. They are biological causes, psychological causes, and social causes. I would say biopsychosocial. Okay. Now, the biological causes, the one that I already talked about, you're born with it. It's a, um, a natural um, malfunction of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, you are firing too fast, naturally. And um, historically, we know that this is an adaptive behavior. You know, there are times, those early days of human life, 
of, of humanity uh, the, the, those many years ago before yeah. we were born yeah thousands of years where there was no house to have sex and uh, people had to go on the, do it on the run and it was important to have pe <laughs> because uh, you could be beaten or your mate could be taken away so it's a natural adaptive behavior which for some people didn't go uh, they are born with it Okay. It is like uh, naturally you are made to do it on the run. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, are you serious? Are you for real? Like that is. <laughs> Oh Lord, why are you laughing? You're making me laugh. You yes. <laughs> You're the one laughing. I have to join you. So there are people who are genuinely. Oh my God. Oh Lord. Hey, so now there are people who are genuinely born yeah. with that soul. <laughs> Miriam, can you see he's even crying? <laughs> You're the one laughing. <laughs> when you laugh, I have to join oh you. <laughs> anyway, oh my God. Yeah. so um, so there are mm. there are men who genuinely you're mm. saying they were created for that. This is how they are. Yeah. They should take their path, and you know we wish them all the best. We can treat them. Okay. Fortunately, <laughs> we have <to laughs> we have treatment. <laughs> oh God. Oh Lord. Okay. Uh -huh. We have treatment. Hey. So there are other biological causes. So that could sound like genetic, the way you are made. Yeah. But there are other biological causes. You know the diseases that people have. Um, sometimes hormone problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there are many hormones that we check for. Yeah. To ensure that uh, they are not the cause. Uh, diseases like diabetes. Yeah, I hear that's a it's huge one. It's very common. Mm. Uh, and this is a common <gasps> cause among the older men. Yeah. Uh, high cholesterol. Mm. You know... Um, overweight. Overweight. If men knew that um, having a big weight is bad for their sex, maybe mm. they would really work on their weight. You know, I always think about that and I ask myself, mm. like... A man who's overweight, and mm. this is biology. Yeah. Doctor, they are saying by hate BMI, you know. Yep. I mm. And then <coughs> they choose to have a good BMI. Does that improve it the improves bedroom? Their vitality. Yeah. It improves their erections. Yeah. It improves their PE if they had it. It improves their sex desire. Yeah. It makes them feel mandy again. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a natural, natural, complete way for them to be able to reverse. Yep. But why do you think most men who are overweight don't see it that way? Well, you know, uh, you ladies think that if I'm overweight, I have money and so I'm a good man. <laughs> well, then you have you ever you seen a thin man who is rich? Well, Thin, skinny, skinny, uh, bony, um, and they have money. Sinani, they on our Facebook. So the way we are socialized <laughs> is to believe that if you are doing well, yeah, you then must you're, have. You're a big guy. So is this of an African culture thing? Could we? Can we try and demystify and say probably more often than not, this comes from society an african societal thing yeah so people abroad don't experience well EP as often as in africa because then i was going to ask like what do the statistics look like globally globally yeah well um and again research around sexual health in africa is very limited mm -hmm. very limited we need to do a lot more uh, but uh, some of these social beliefs cut across borders and across continents. If you go to the U.S., for example, yeah. you may find the biggest people you've ever seen in the world. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, I don't know for what reason uh, they tolerate that, but there could be other reasons beyond what we believe in in Africa. Yeah. So weight problems are there all over. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and they come with issues around sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so biologically then uh, we have those diseases, we have those hormone issues, the weight. Um, and then we say there are also psychological causes. Yeah. Psychological, you're stressed and a lot of stress these days. Mm. Your candidate lost, for example. <laughs> In the elections, yeah, you start having PE. Ah, yeah, you don't have money, life is too difficult these days. Yeah, your body can just uh, not function well. Wow, yeah, um, but what then does that mean? I mean, I mean, what does that how come it happens for some and it doesn't happen for others? So, what does that mean? Our, we react differently to situations. Okay. During COVID, I did a study and um, a lot of men had sex problems. Yeah. Just because they were told to sit in the house. Oh. And not go and socialize and watch football and play with other men. Oh. They ended up with sex problems. Wow. Because psychologically, they were not used to that. Is that... Is that, does that contribute to a high rise of people separating? It contributed more to domestic violence. Wow. Yeah. To the man or to the woman? You see, when they are frustrated and uh, nothing is not spicy anymore, they start to express those frustrations in other ways. And this is the man? The man. One minute, Dr. Tai. This is the adult in the room, and we are with Professor Joachim Osur. Um, when men are too quick in the bedroom, causes and solutions. Tell a friend to tell a friend, and guys, I'm opening my lines in a sec. Good evening. This is the adults in the room, and the adults in the room is you and I, Karigo Gatere, and you may always call me the shy mistress, and Professor Joachim Osur. He is the Vice Chancellor, AMREF International University, and Sexual Medicine Specialist. We are having a conversation on when men are too quick in the bedroom, the causes and the solutions wababa i told you it's friday night and i got you zero seven one nine zero one two six double zero is the number that you should be dialing in like 10 minutes or so we have to finish the causes kidogo kidogo of pe and then the number that you can whatsapp me is on zero double one zero two double eight one six two higher to my to end delay uh -huh. mm -hmm. The social <laughs> behaviors. Well, yeah, yeah. There are some social causes. Yeah. Social causes here, things like alcohol, you know, social behaviors that we value so much. Lack of sleep. Uh, you know, when you're deprived, uh, you're sleeping for less than six hours a night. Your body starts to give up. Yeah. Uh, using lo a lot of alcohol kills nerves. Yeah. And then the functions are affected. Um, relationship problems when uh, people are not connected emotionally mm. they have sex problems as a result and PE is one of them what do you mean when they are not connected emotionally because sex is not just a physical act it is emotional as well it's, you need emotional connection but there are men who will beg to differ <laughs> Well, they'd say, Dr. Mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> if, if it's going to be a long term relationship, yeah, I can assure you if there is no emotional connection, it's a matter of time before erections fail and PE also happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those, um, 
one of excitements maybe one can talk of that wow okay so one of excitements is fine mm -hmm. but as a woman now this is where now i want to introduce the woman's part mm. just for a bit because i asked my girlfriends to send me questions yep. <laughs> and some sent very interesting questions mm. and i'll be sharing them as we go and one of the questions that was asked is once you know before we get into solutions and also other causes etc etc but as a woman now you've established you know you know your man mm. you've established that this is how he operates this is how he functions how can you support him because there's a woman listening and she's thinking my god Karigo and Prof, you're just describing my person. Just an idea, genuine support. I did for now, just for now. Okay. So, one thing is, it's best to make be best use of what you have. Eh? Um, there is something in every person that is uh, interesting. Yeah. So even the man with PE, possibly he's uh, doing a lot of. Um, for play that uh, the partner enjoys. Yes. And we know that uh, penetrative sex is just maybe one third of what people do sexually. There are other things that they do and that are also pleasurable and they can enjoy those things mm. so that uh, it's not just the penetrative sex bit. Yes. Uh, so what if he's not interested? We have to create interest in them. Uh -huh. Remember, sex is a two-people thing. Please remind the gentleman that. Yeah, it's a two-people thing. Yeah. So we can both contribute to it. Not we can both. We are supposed to be both contributing. We should. <laughs> we should. We must. We must. Yes. Uh -huh. So make the best use of what is available. But secondly, don't hide the problem. There so, are solutions. So how should a woman best approach the man whereby, you know this is the problem. Mm -hmm. you know, you've been telling your girlfriends, you've been having this conversation, you've been saying, who you, na ye ye. But how do you approach this conversation with your man in a way that, as a man, it is acceptable without bruising your ego? You know, there is something women do. Eh? They say we need to talk. And that scares away the man. Yeah. When the man hears, um, we need to talk, uh, it means there is a problem. I think the first thing is to establish a friendship. Yeah. A lot of people are not friends with their partners. And yeah. yeah, find a way of naturally talking to each other and create time to talk. Yeah. And then these sensitive issues can be more easy to talk about. Yeah. Communication in relationships is a big problem. I keep saying. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just as simple as saying, hey, this is what I'm experiencing. I need help. There are a lot of couples who are able to talk about their sexuality in a very easy way mm. and look for solutions. Mm. But there are also many couples who just can't talk about it. Yeah. They are suffering and they are fighting instead. Yeah. And undermining each other. So managing communication generally is important if you are going then to talk about these sensitive topics in future. <sighs> Marion Bosire says No, I won't read that one yet. Let me read for Elon El Nino Darwin. Too quick. Till she saves you in her contacts, Gafla Bin Vu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick release may be costed by high temperature. You know, too much feelings till it comes out. So, maybe we need to add this, that in premature ejaculation, it is loss of control. Oh, is you it? have yeah. no control. <laughs> you see... <laughs> <laughs> is this where the first men are we came from <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> oh my god, I hope my bosses are not listening <laughs> because I'm having too much fun with this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> this is why men say this is where it came from uh, men are weak mm-hmm. from this phrase of you having see, no control. If, if you think How can of, you not have control? No, think of a plan. you're not disciplined. Think of a <laughs> think of a plan. Yeah. They say when the plane has reached a certain height, mm. they put on autopilot. Yeah. You have switched it and it's moving. <laughs> you have no control. But by the time the plane gets there, Dr. E, we have gone through a lot. <laughs> 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 Even you, you know, by the time the plane gets there, when you put on the belt, there's a lot that has happened. So these guys <laughs> switch into the autopilot mode too fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! When they're in that mode, yeah. they're helpless. Oh. They're actually struggling, but there is nothing they can do. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So it is not their mistake. Yeah. I think we need to get that right. It's not out of their, you know, they're not doing it intentionally. Yes, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. And that is why they feel so frustrated. And um, oh, yeah. uh, when, when then someone says, what's wrong with you? Mm. Because they also hope they could do better. Mm. Yeah. So we can actually come to the conclusion and say that it's not normal to arrive quickly. It is not normal. It has causes, yeah. which we've tried to describe in yeah. passing. Yeah. And because we know causes, we can get treatment for it. And the way a woman can support her man is just by breaking it down and being open and honest. In a respectful in a loving way. way. Yeah. You know, there is respect and love. Eh? Oh, in a loving way. In a loving way. Without making him feel like he's useless. Yeah. 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 Could you say that sometimes um, PE is a contributor to adultery? All right. I mean, so we, we, we talked about it contributing during the COVID times for battery, mm-hmm. but, you know, right, being abusive. Mm-hmm. But what about adultery? Cheating. That's a very difficult one because um, from what I've seen, people don't necessarily cheat because of their partner. They do it for their own reasons most of the time. Of course, they can use a partner as an excuse. Yeah. But they do it for their own reasons. It's their choice. It's their choice. Yeah. It's a choice they make. Yeah. And uh, sometimes I hear one say that... Uh, uh, this man confused me or this lady confused me. So it's never their partner. Yeah. It is they who Made have decided choice. to do it. Yeah. And then they get a reason for it. Mm. Yeah. We are the adults in the room and we are having a very beautiful conversation with Professor Joachim Osur. Vice Chancellor Amref International University and Sexual Medicine Specialist. When men are too quick in the bedroom, causes and solutions. I'll be picking up your calls once we come from this. Jeff Buckley, Hallelujah Jam, 0719012600, is the WhatsApp number. And guys, <laughs> I hope you heard from the word go. Wababa, five to seven minutes is what we are considering as normal. You heard? Spice. So you can always seek help for why men are too quick in the bedroom because Professor Joachim Asur is right here with you. And I live in studio, live in studio, spicefm.co.ke is where you can view the both of us as he shares his expertise, opinion, honest opinion, and you know, he's (laughs) making me laugh beyond words. The show is the adults in the room. (laughs) Uh, We had so many calls during um, that 
week SWV break. 0719012600 is a number that you can dial. 0110128162 is the WhatsApp number. And Dr. we have Professor Dr. and Professor Sindo. You're, you're a man of many hearts. Mm -hmm. Somebody has asked <coughs> this question. Why is it that Viagra makes them erect? That is what Viagra was made to do. Okay. It was made to help solve some erection problems. Because there are diseases that make you not have an erection. We need to diagnose them and then if they are the ones that Viagra can treat, yeah. we give you Viagra and you get an erection. Hello, Spice. Hello. Hello. Hey. My name is Kipchumba. Hi, Kipchumba. How are you doing? I'm sorry to have a jacket conversation. Eh? No worries. Yeah, I have a uh, same problem affected. Uh, my partner, my girlfriend now, is dry and I take long, long time to penetrate and then all of a sudden when I have a chance, is that in the Nantas as a Mwaka Mapema Sasa? So, what may be the problem? Should I solve with the partner? Nayana Nandia, ah, with the Fanya Vizuri, I will feel discouraged. Elder, I call this one elder. Thank you so much. Um, doctor, did you hear his question or should he repeat? No, I got it. Okay. Uh, what he's saying is that the partner cannot get lubrication. Yes. Yeah. I think then he's saying that it takes too long. They are trying to get lubrication. By yeah. the time he's trying penetrative sex, maybe yeah. uh, things are so bad he just My finishes. Yeah. yeah. So that is uh, a problem now between the two of them. It's not a one-person problem. Yeah. We have to find out why is she not getting lubrication. Uh, it could be a lot of things yeah. which we will discuss another day. Yeah. But uh, when two people cannot um, find a, a point of connection, yeah. sometimes they lose erection and the other one is dry and then things don't happen. So we need to solve it by talking to both of them to find out where is the issue. Yeah. Mm. You. You're satisfied? Yeah. I'm satisfied, but I wait for that conversation next time. Yes, we'll be coming uh, with another conversation with the women. Today, it's all about the men. <laughs> thank you, thank you, madam. Thank you. Wow. Zero seven one nine zero one two six double zero is the number that you can dial and ask Professor Joachim Osur all the questions you have been having, lady, gentleman. This is the time for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is your chance. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I when I was researching for this conversation, one thing that I came across that seemed very repetitive, 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 whichever wherever you went to school, mm -hmm. is that more often than not, many men are shy. They're embarrassed. They are fearful. It's not easy talking about your sexual failure. Is it a failure, really? That's how they look at it. There are people who have been trying to see me for the last two years. Mm. Um, Guy. They call, they don't come, they yeah. write a message, they say I'm coming, they don't come. Because it's difficult uh, opening up and talking about those things. Yeah. It's not the, the way we are socialized. Is it an African thing? Partly, yes. But I think generally, have you ever wondered why we put on clothes? Just so that we do not, so that we, for discretion, perhaps. <laughs> because there are parts of the body which That's are right. considered private. Yeah. And uh, talking about them and how they are functioning is considered foul. Who don't we know about that? <laughs> 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 I mean, this is the anatomy of the body. Yeah. This is what causes the body to function. Mm -hmm. How can we normalize? 
having the men speak out because one thing that I have come to really understand through my research today is that there are very many men that are struggling. Yep. About 30% of men have suffered PE or are suffering PE as we talk. Wow. 30%. That's a huge number. Yeah. How many millions are those in Kenya? You know, there are about uh, 25 million men. So a third of those are worried about premature ejaculation. So it's a common issue. Now, I want you to kindly break it down for us. In just very layman, how PE affects relationships. And not only between you and your partner. Mm. Outside. Because now with your partner, this is what you're experiencing. Now, how does it manifest elsewhere? layman's because there mm. could be someone listening and then we say mention something and they're like oh okay maybe this is what this person is experiencing yeah so as i said from the beginning yeah some men with severe pe will not even want a relationship oh. so there is nothing to affect when you're thinking of affecting a relationship uh. because they don't want to embarrass themselves so they won't even start it but then there are those who are in a relationship and then it happens. Yeah. Um, the common thing is that because it's difficult to talk about this issue and to get help, yeah. they get into a crisis of, you know, conflict. Yeah. And uh, when you ask people, why are you fighting and why are you divorcing? Many will not tell you the truth. A lot of those people have bedroom issues. So sometimes more often than not, some of these things is just They'll tell you that, bedroom. oh, he doesn't uh, treat me well, oh, she doesn't uh, cook for me. But you know, the issue could be in the bedroom. Yeah. And a lot of divorces today, when they go to court, they will not say it is sex. Yeah. They will say other things. Yeah. But sex is a common, common cause of divorce and conflicts in yeah. relationships. Yeah. Now you can imagine you're talking about how it affects people generally and other relationships. When uh, things are not happening well at home, you and your partner are not coping. Uh, for a man, it affects all other relationships. At work, you begin to behave funny. You are not um performing so you get into conflict with your boss mm. um the way you look at ladies may be different so you may get into problems with some ladies mm. so generally the relationships that people have whatever even with your parents and parents of your wife or uh, their sisters and so on there is a lot that is contributed to yeah. By bedroom success or failure. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Remember, remember for those having children too. Yeah. Uh, some children wonder why is mom and dad always fighting? Mm. Maybe they have sex issues. Mm. Yeah. So the presence of children should not, uh, you know, you should not put aside the absence of the general bedroom satisfaction like children are not a reflector of good no 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 wow because more often than not we see kids then we say hey oh, you know, wanna enjoy <laughs> you know people can conceive without really having sex yeah uh, when when i meet couples and i ask so when did you last have sex it's always a point of contention because someone says we did last week and someone says no we didn't because guy because the definition of having <laughs> sex differs <laughs> oh lord yeah. and someone says you tried but you failed but him he knows he did it yeah me i me 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 i yeah. arrived yeah so oh having God. children there are people having children without really having sex is that where sometimes a partner female partner may say my partner is a selfish lover yeah um i hear a lot of that yeah 
but uh, again it needs to be defined sometimes yeah. it's because of the emotional disconnection people are busy doing what they are doing yeah but you're not really together your mind is not there thank you so much for bringing up the emotional connection very timely omondi felix has said hi kariko just have a question for the professor he has said that sex is an emotional attachment how about the lady of the twilight who do it for business purposes is it still emotional attachment of course it is business but he's saying you've said that sex is emotional attachment or is this just for when it comes to long-term partnerships boyfriend girlfriend partnerships husband wife so uh, again uh, maybe another day we will talk about sex work ah uh, yeah um or maybe we can talk about sex work when we are speaking about the anatomy of the woman yeah you that know, would se fit sex perfectly work is the oldest profession yes yeah? yes and there are reasons why people go into sex work it's yeah. not because they want to have sex no they want to put food <laughs> on their table yeah there are many things it's a job yep so i i think it may not be the example to give okay in people who are having an intimate relationship mm. that uh, involves having sex it it is a different uh, thing yeah. it's a different thing Freddy Okwaro asks adults in the room tuned in how long or which period of time should a well healthy man should masturbate approximately is it normal to do experience it weekly is it true that if a man goes for a long time before sex his manhood can be dormant how he akona maswali how long should a man stay without sex and what happens when you have more energy to perform feeling energetic during performance but your manhood keeps on sleeping so where do we start where, okay how okay so he begins with tuned in how long or which period of time should a wealthy healthy man masturbate okay and i don't know why he's putting wealthy here but wealthy <laughs> <laughs> wealthy healthy man wealthy healthy man <laughs> okay yeah so um so as i said earlier on a lot of people masturbate when they are in the process of self discovery and most of it is normally during adolescence yeah when they are discovering their bodies and they realize there are parts of the body which are pleasurable to touch and things like that yeah and with time most of them will outgrow it or will do it very infrequently and um, some may not even do it again yeah as they get into partner sex so that's a very normal trend yes now um in sexual medicine we talk of sex release that uh, the body keeps manufacturing uh, sperms and things that need to come out mm. and they can come out in many ways either through masturbation through partner sex or through wet dreams yeah all those are channels that the body uses to have a release yeah there is no uh, rule that you have to have sex so many times you know there are people who don't have sex at all and it is fine yeah but they'll still have their sex release maybe through uh, wet dreams yeah which is normal and so there are no rules to these things how many times you must masturbate or have partner sex is neither here nor there yes. and men should never worry i hear a lot of worries and a lot of myths around this people saying that oh if you don't have sex it will migrate into your head i don't know where <laughs> you start having um backache yeah. those things are myths yeah. the body has a way of managing itself there are people who don't have sex for religious reasons yeah. they are quite healthy yeah others don't have simply because they don't want and yeah. they are okay yeah and preference so, preference and so um you shouldn't worry that oh i've not had sex today i'll die you won't die 
lack of not having i mean lack of sex never kills anybody <laughs> you know on my socials i like to encourage people to you know i say an orgasm a day <laughs> takes the doctor away well it is okay to Keeps have an the orgasm. doctor away yeah yeah it's good to have an orgasm yeah but a healthy one who doesn't want to feel good anyway yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, oh Lord, <laughs> Professor Joachim Osur, um, he's the Vice Chancellor of Amresh International University and he's a sexual medicine specialist and he's teaching us when men are too quick in the bedroom, what are the causes and the solutions? 0719012600 is the number that you should be dialing in like three minutes and then zero double one zero one two double eight one six two is the whatsapp number that you can send all of your questions just in case you're feeling shy you don't want to call in and then to ask you we've said that we are debunking and we are saying that men five to seven minutes is normal and acceptable yes Spice. Who are you apologizing to this Friday night? Unaskei conversation with baby, I'm sorry. Kumbe ni shita, si mimi. It's the problem, not I. Oh Lord, we are in studio with Professor Joachim Osur. He's the Vice Chancellor for AMREF International University and a sexual medicine expert. When men are too quick in the bedroom, the solutions and the causes. You have 15 minutes to call me because we have 15 minutes to the top of the hour at 10 p.m. and you know what that means, right? Yeah. So 0719012600 is the number that you should be dialing. And you may send me a WhatsApp on zero double one zero two double eight one six two. So we have a few WhatsApps here, Prof. Mm -hmm. And Huntington says he's from Kisumu. He's following the sex education, which is very good. I feel like sex education should be normalized, mm. right? We need to talk about sex. Yeah. Yeah. on from an educational healthy informative mm -hmm. point of view because i feel like very many people don't know very many things we are just moving <laughs> you see we're just <laughs> before we became westernized yeah each community had a way of talking about sex in a way that uh, made young people know things yes but these days who talks about it you have yeah. uh, they just watch porn and yeah um, especially that very many people say that they learn from internet yep. x x rated videos yeah yep. and you know those people are and we also have grown men yeah who also say the same thing you know a lot of things in the internet are people acting it's not reality yeah and then you want to behave like them <laughs> <laughs> oh lord uh hello karigo had this question what remedies can one do with premature ejaculation and this is a gentleman who had sent me a tweet during the day and let mm. me just read for you his tweet so that we can answer him he mm -hmm. said specifically he said um ask him what foods should men be taking to remain strong during sexual intercourse so i think now we are just giving solutions yeah so in giving solutions remember the causes are very many yeah and so it is important to define the cause and treat the cause yeah I always say that um, men and women should have an annual sexual health check. Okay. Because 
nobody has taught us a lot of things. We just try to discover by ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes you have a problem that you're not even aware of. So if you go for your annual sexual health check, you might just discover that, by the way, a lot of men who come to me, some very old, yeah. have one testis and they think it is normal. Aye. Because nobody told them that they're supposed to be two. <laughs> oh my God, that is so sad. Yeah. That is so, is that, that's the same reason why also we have men who are fathering kids that are not theirs. <laughs> Tell me more about that. <laughs> 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 Professor, don't laugh at, don't let you laugh. Don't laugh at your species. <laughs> God, you have been hanging out with Akamba today. Don't, <laughs> don't laugh at your species. Yeah, we have men who are raising children that are not theirs. Mm. The same reason why they would think they have one testicle and it's normal. <laughs> Yeah. But then what does that mean? It means, let me tell you what happens. Honestly. Uh, elsewhere what surely. happens. Elsewhere what happens. When a child is born, they examine that child fully. Yeah. Including the genitals. If there is a problem, you are told in good time. When they enter adolescence, again, they are checked. Mm. When they get into a relationship, again, they are examined. When they are changing relationships, they are examined. Because there are things you carry from one person to, to another, another and you'd like to know that you are not carrying something dangerous. Yeah. But that is not the practice here. Yeah. So a lot of people have problems which are not diagnosed. Uh, hi, I'm following the adults in the room. What is happening when your partner complains that you are taking too long to ejaculate? So within, that's another problem. Within five minutes, really? Is it normal? Please advise. Thank you for enticing this topic. You have made my evening. You seriously forced me to join the laughter. Hello, Spice. Hi, Karibu. Hi, how are you, Peter? I'm very fine. I reduce your volume so that the doctor can hear your question. And just go right and ask the question kindly. So, uh, Dr. My question is, um, do you think that, okay, with the conversation that we've already given out for, for the day, should it, should it be introduced in, uh, let's say, schools, colleges, or uh, just the education itself on premature ejaculation? Because I think maybe parents also need to be aware of this uh, scenario. Yep. Thank you so much, Peter. No okay. So two questions. Which one do you want to begin with? You know, the issue of uh, sexuality education in schools is very controversial. Yeah. <laughs> People think that if their children and their adolescent sons and daughters are taught these things, yeah, that they will get spoiled. Yeah. Utaharibika. Mm. So they don't it's like want... You're, um, you're giving them ammunition. Yep. Not knowing that the ammunition is already there. You know, the hormones that people develop in adolescence yeah. are a serious ammunition. You can't stop them. They will have sex. They will feel like having sex. Yeah. It will push them into having sex. Yeah, regardless. Yep. So it is better they are given information that they can use to make decisions. Yeah. But our system, our people find that very difficult. Yes. And I remember the last time this conversation came up, it didn't end well. There yeah. was a disagreement and the whole thing was abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. But in your opinion, should it be introduced in the curriculum from Do you a know, young age? A lot of people say, if only I knew, mm. if only I knew, yeah. my life would be different today. Yeah. If only I knew that having sex while standing can make you pregnant. Yeah. I wouldn't have ended but uh, you know this way. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, there is lack of information and a lot of misinformation and myths yeah. around sex and what sexuality education does is to correct them yeah. give the right information yeah. and help people be able to manage their sexuality. Question from the WhatsApp. What of those who just have one round and they are gone for almost forever? <laughs> <laughs> Where forever means what? 
<laughs> They'll die without it again. We will be seeing you in the next six working months. <laughs> uh, well, again, that that needs to be defined. I don't know what age that person is. Yeah. Because the recovery period from one sexual round to another increases with age. Oh. Okay. And so I know that happens for women, but for men, yep, really? it does. So a man who is in his teenage years can have sex continuously from one round to another. Okay. And they can have five rounds in a night. <laughs> That's why Bente's hot. <laughs> 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 uh-huh. Yeah, but. <laughs> Now I understand the Benton with I've never really understood it. <laughs> now I get it. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> now as these men age, yeah. the recovery period from one sexual round to another increases. And there is a time that it can be many hours. And so they can't have like more than one round in a night because they may need six hours to recover. Wow. And that is just natural. It's just natural. Wow. Okay. And so I don't know that person asking how old they are. If they are 90, for example, maybe they are having sex once in two days at the very most. How often should a healthy couple enjoy sex during, like how often during the week? There are some who say once a week, twice a week. Mm. What's considered healthy? There is really no prescription okay. on this. Okay. It is what makes them happy. Yeah. And some people will have sex once a week and they are happy. Yeah. Others will want to have sex three night, three times a night. Yeah. And when they have it once, they will come to me and say, we feel there is a problem because it only happened once yeah. in the night every day. And we are used to three, four times. So it really depends. Yeah. Yeah. What's the relationship? Okay, so we have a listener who said today she reminds her of the Sexy Friday <laughs> that used to be. <laughs> yeah, I remember telling you about Sexy Friday. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing it back on an informative way. Way, because we believe that you know, let's have safe sex. And why are we having safe sex? And how can we have safe sex? Healthy sex. Healthy, yes. healthy. Mm. That's the right word. Healthy. Yes. What's the relationship between <laughs> failure to excrete a sperm and prostate cancer? So that's another myth that goes around. I've heard some people say, oh, if you're having sex too much, you will have prostate cancer. Others saying, oh, if you're not having sex, you will have prostate cancer. What research shows is that there is no relationship. Okay. Otherwise, we would be able to control prostate cancer. It just comes. Yeah. It has nothing to do with how many times you've had sex in your life. Yeah. Yeah. The gentleman who talked about what of those, I don't know if a gentleman or a gentle lady, uh, what of those who just have one round and gone for almost forever, he says the age is 40 years. 40 years. That's normal. Hmm. And what is forever? <laughs> <laughs> so that that's a very difficult question to answer unless we we interrogate further. Yeah. It could be because even the relationship could be a problem. Yeah. You know they say that uh familiarity breeds content. Yeah. And in long-term relationships because people are unable to innovate. Mm. They want to do the same thing every day. Kind of they lose interest in each other. Mm. And you find that the frequency goes down. Even in people who are very healthy. Just yeah. by the mere fact that there is no variety. Yeah. They can't continue beyond once in a month. I want you to... Uh, there's a question that I've always asked and i've never gotten an answer as we come to a conclusion to this amazing conversation that we've chosen to focus on men mm -hmm. and men alone mm -hmm. <laughs> can men kegel and how can they if they can because i know how to kegel as a woman yep but men can men kegel yep so kegel the, the, 
we, the other language or the other word for it is pelvic exercises. Uh-huh. Pelvic muscle exercises. Yes. Um, let me give an example of a weightlifter. Yeah, and you have 30 seconds. <laughs> when you lift weights, your yes. muscles grow and they become strong. Yes. When you do kegels, your pelvic muscles grow and they become strong. Yes. It means you are able to control urine better. Yes. It means you have better ejaculations. Yes. You even have better erections. Yes. Men can do kegel exercises. Spice.